All right, let's take a look. Um, we're going to talk about inverse um, trig graphs. So um, we've talked about the regular graphs of sine, cosine, tangent, um, cotangent, cosecant, and secant. If we do the, the inverse of that, um, there, there's a problem that comes up. Because in order for something to be a function, remember that um, if you do the vertical line test, you only cross through it one time. And remember, if we were to do the inverse of sine, just the regular sine function that, remember, repeats in a wave like this, um, this would actually continue on and go down and up. And the problem with that is that, notice, it's not a function. Because if I were to do the vertical line tests, um, when x is 0.5, I have an answer here, here, here. And you can only have one y value for each of your x values in order to be a function. So to fix that problem, what they do is they put restraints on your range. The range is only going to go from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 for sine. And then notice we have a function. Nothing is repeated. Um, with cosine, they actually go from y being 0 to pi. Tangent is from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And notice that gives us one of our inverse curves for tangent. Um, cotangent, like cosine, is from 0 to pi. Um, cosecant, like our sine and our tangent, is from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 for our y values. And secant, like our cosine and our cotangent, has a range from 0 to pi. Okay, so keep that in mind. Um, it's not going to come into play a whole lot in this very first video, but um, it will. Okay, so in your text, they define sine inverse this way, the sine inverse of the sine of an angle. Okay, so remember the sine of an angle gives you the ratio, the sine ratio. And when you do sine inverse, that gives you the angle back. Okay, so sine inverse sine of y is y. But y has to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. And that's, again, like we showed on our graph, that kind of restricts our answers and is going to cause a little bit of work for us um, later on. The same with tangent, the inverse tangent of the tangent of an angle, because remember, tangent of the angle gives us the ratio. And then when you do the inverse tangent, that gives you the angle again. <laughs> so um, people sometimes say that they cancel each other out. Um, in a way, they are inverses of each other. But like I said, sometimes we'll have to do a bit more work to make sure we fall into the appropriate range. So one thing you want to remember is that for sine, tangent, and cosecant, when you're finding an angle, um, it has to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. For cosine, cotangent, and secant, your angle needs to be between 0 and pi. So um, another thing you'll want to keep in mind with these is that we're going to be using exact values. So you can use the unit circle chart or you can use the table, whichever is most comfortable for you. Um, the unit circle fit better on my page, so that's what I used. Um, so remember that x is your cosine and y is the sine. Um, tangent, you just do um, sine divided by cosine. Okay, But like I said, you can also use that chart that we had that was in table format. Okay, so here's our first question. Notice it says find the exact value, and it says in radians of arctangent or inverse tangent of negative 1. So what they're asking is, at what angle is tangent equal to negative 1? Um, and on your unit circle where you have your notes, you may want to come in here and write the tangent of each, each angle. That might make it e easier for you. Okay, um, it might simplify it a little. So we would go and say, OK, inverse tangent of negative 1. And you can try that on your calculator. You want to make sure it's in radians. Um, that will be a good idea, idea for checking your answer. OK, but it gives me negative 0.785. Um, but so what we want to look for is on your chart, you'll notice the tangent is negative 1 in two places. OK, the tangent is negative 1 here at 3 pi over 4, and again here at 7 pi over 4. Okay, um, We want the answer, remember our range, 
our answer needs to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Okay, so where would that be? Well, that is this section of the circle. Okay, so our answer would be would be this angle here because we want it to be in this range between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Um, so notice that would give us this angle, the pi over 4, um, but we want it between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, so we're actually going to call that negative pi over 4 instead. A little while to get the hang of. Um, okay, here we have our question, find the exact value in radians for inverse sine of 0. Where is our sine equal to 0? Well, notice it's equal to 0 here sine is our, our y value, and it's also equal to 0 here. Okay, so our answer is either going to be 0 or pi. Okay, well remember what range our inverse answers for sine had to be in. They had to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, just like, whoops, just like our tangent. Okay, so which of those answers is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2? It's right here, 0. So the inverse sine of 0 is 0. Okay, find the exact value, again, in radians. And now that means no decimals or anything. Okay, exact value in radians of the inverse cosine of negative 1. Okay, so where is our cosine negative 1? That's our x value. So I'm looking for where my x on the point is negative 1. Here we go. Right here, the cosine is negative 1, and that's the only place. So make sure it's in my range, which it is. Um, cosine values have to be between 0 and pi. Okay, so pi would be my correct answer here. Find the exact value in radians of the inverse sine of negative 1. Well, where is the sine negative 1? Sine is our y value, so look in, the, the y value is negative 1 right here at this point. Okay, what angle would that be? Well, it's the angle 3 pi over 2 if we're going positive. But remember, our answers for sine need to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, including those endpoints. So this is actually our answer we're going to write as negative pi over 2.